Why were you selling pure tar in KNS? Were you hungry? Are you from a poor home? Sub, bro. Me, I come from a home where there are certain things that you want. Once there you want, but you won't get. I've always wanted extra cash to do what I want to do. So I needed water one evening and I couldn't get some. So I had to walk from Katanga all the way to Brunei to go and take water from my cousin's place. So on my way back and I realized that ah, nobody they sell water for this hostel. The next day I went to ask for how much a bag cost. So I bought the bag, took it to my room. The next evening somebody comes and goes, actually they want water. Then I give up. So I say, ah, I'll just sell so the bag cost me about two CD, 50 pesos. Then I'll buy like 10, line it out in my room. Then in the evenings, I put a sign on the door that water available. Then people will come and come and come and buy. I had a very horrible roommate, some particular guy. I go feed go JJ the water, then they, they drink the water, they chop some of the money, the coins. Oh, Maza. But it was a good experience because I got to see what it means to be the solution to a problem. I can say in my life, I've done about different businesses all through and through. I don't have the cash to show for it, but I have the experience to show for it. This week, we continue our conversation with you to feel the vibe hit maker, Nanayao Ofuriata, probably known as One Man Thousand. Enjoy. Sorry to cut you. That selling, where did it come from? I've always been an entrepreneur. Mm. I've always been. Uh, my first job that I ever had, I was an errand boy for one of my cousins called okay. Eunice. Eunice used to send me to places like Tema to go and deliver stuff. She had a printing agency. Wow. She had an ad agency by mm. that time, so creative focus, I remember the name. And she'll get orders, she'll get clients, and she told me to go and deliver this, go and deliver that, I love that. And she used to pay me. Okay. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So delivery guy. I used to do that. Right. And then after that, her sister, who was Abigail, used to make charm bracelets. Okay. And I was like, yeah, I can sell this. So I used to sell it for some of the girls in my class. Wow. Love that business. I, I'm, I don't like being a bother. Okay. And I don't like being a bother to people. So I've always wanted extra cash to do what I want to do. And in the end, most of the things I use it for is food. <laughs> well, it it makes a challenge. Well, I mean, I, I've always not wanted to stress people out. No, no, no. Like, me, I come from a home where there are certain things that you want. Mm. What's there you want, but you won't get. Mm. Uh, so, I, I mean, although at a point it became um, more of like an obsession okay. to do business anyhow and anywhere I can. Wow. But um, I've always had that. I've always had that. I was selling charm bracelets. Mm. I remember another one of my cousins, Zerekia, she used to make these name bracelets, shambales and things, and I'll go and pick some and go and sell some. Um, I've always had that thing. I've always had that thing. So I can say in my life, I've done about like 13 different businesses all through and through. I don't have the cash to show for it. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I get in there, I have the experience to show for it. So when I'm rich, don't get surprised. Yeah. I've done things before. Now I tell her the vacation bus, you know. So right, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. So Adenta Bus. Um, Adenta Bus was started by a guy who was in our church. He's called Mike. Okay. And Mike, oh, two time kept doing, oh, Charlie, we, we organized the bus for people who are in KNUSD in and around the Adenta area. So let's let's go. We'll, we'll take you, we'll take you, we'll take you. And we used to do that, but Mike always needed help because it was a lot of work and Mike didn't really have people that were dedicated enough. So one day my best friend and I, James, we both used to stay in the Adenta area. Like, you know what, Mike will help you out. This is what we want to do. And we offered and he's like, okay, sure, if you guys can. Wow. The, the year we took over, the bus doubled. Wow. From one big bus to two buses. Wow. Then we got like multiple people we were able to run it. So all my four years in campus, I used to run the Adenta bus. We rebranded, made sure we, now we have a team after us who are oh. running the bus. And we, we are not even stepping in again. I don't even know what they are doing. I don't know what they're up to now. Wow. They are okay. They are sorted. But we had, we were able to groom people after us mm. who I'm sure will groom people after them. Wow. Well, I know I've done my part. But um, that was another clean situation of being the solution to people's problems. Because it's a lot of stress if you are moving from Adenta, Oyarifa, Ibri, East yeah. Legon, not like on to Carnation to go and take a bus to KNUST. Why don't we bring buses close mm. and solve that situation? So, wow. Good one. So, I, I think you've basically given us wh why you sell, why, you know, deciding to be a, a solution to a problem. And I hear every time I listen to marketers, strategists, the, uh, the first thing they keep saying is that, hey, don't look for the money. Rather look to being a solution. Yeah. And it's going to pay off. And, you, you started with the selling the water, deciding to say, hey, let's bring comfort to people. Who doesn't like convenience? Let's bring the bus to them. For example, mm -hmm. sorry, in Ken USD, I sold Banco in Tilapia. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know about that. Oh, yeah, sure not. I had, I had a Banco in Tilapia business. Wow. Where were you getting from? From campus or off campus or wow? Oh, campus. 
Then, then, so I found out that I used to buy some tilapia that was amazing. And I realized that like people couldn't buy tilapia on a regular. Wow. So I make a sell them for you people, Mama Indy. So you go, if the person buy, come to you, then you go, go there, sell them. So I agree, I call her, I agree. I had a delivery guy in place. He knew where the place was. So if I get my orders, I compile, the pre-order, I compile, most of my orders were coming from Twitter. Wow. So I go compile everything. So me, social media has been everything to me. I would compile all the orders, then send give the woman, she go prep them, delivery guy will come pick them, let me go. But I never had solid delivery, like a solid delivery system. It was always um, here and there. So there are days where I would go for the food myself and walk off campus, go and deliver to walk to people's rooms. So the number of people that have apologized to just because they chose crazy, man, it's crazy. Wow. It's crazy. So we did that just, so no matter how big the problem is, or no matter how small the problem is, you can be a solution. Can be a solution. And that can be your, your means of selling or marketing. Wow. That's a good one. I like that. Now, how does that metamorphose into meeting Mike, right. deciding to start an agency? Because mm -hmm. you don't, you didn't just you rap. So it's, it's just basically you always love marketing, selling. Tell us about Brainstorm Africa. How you joined the team and Mike and I were in front of him. Okay, but we weren't the closest friends. Okay, at all. I, I just knew he was in A one. I was in A two. Okay, I just knew him. We had mutual friends. We were, but we're cool. We're cool. Mike, Mike and I have never had our prefect. He was cool. We never had a running. Okay. It was uh, Mike, Mike is one of the most unproblematic people in the world. Very cool. Nah, 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 he did so, <laughs> Mike started graphic design. Okay. And for me, I had a lot of people who needed those those things. So I was like, ah, Charlie, bro, make me start some business. Mm -hmm. I go, I go bring you more clients. They go do more design. In front of him. I think right before we finished okay. Okay. Yeah. So we did that. We worked it out, and I realized that the first, so the first thing we tested with was my mom's um, business. So I've sold purses before. Wow. My mom had a dead business, and I was like, you know, let's pick it up and rebrand it and revamp it. So till now she uses, it, she's she's doing great with it. It's called Eve Treasures. Okay. And I picked it and I gave it to Mike that Charlie. We'll be rebrand them. We'll be work on them. So I gave the creative direction for that. Okay. And Mike did the design. Wow. And Mike would always come back to me like, bro, you sure said this be okay? You sure said this be? I said, I mean, you know, sure say we know if you do business with this thing. I mean, like, uh, Monday, Monday, we could cook something. So the name came up, Brainstorm Africa. Okay. He made me go back with like, a list of names. I came up with Brainstorm Africa. He goes like, go work, go work, go work. Then, but the key thing is that this business was solely run on Telegram. Okay. We never met. As I said, wow. Never. Everything on Telegram. We are about six years in now. Wow. Everything Telegram. You're serious? <laughs> everything wow. virtual, everything remote, nothing. Wow. You can count the number of in-person meetings we've had. There won't be more than five. Wow. Mm -mm. There won't be more than five. Unless maybe we're meeting to record a podcast. Even that we got tired. Then we started back to Zoom. Wow. So straight from there, we spoke about it. Then So I was in charge of bringing the leads and he was to do the creatives. Then we realized that as time was growing, if you're growing and scaling up, because we realized that Charlie, we need to make money and we need to like expand and we need to do more. As it's going and growing, we realized that our roles had to change. Mm. So that's that's what happened. And that's how Brainstorm Africa was built. It was just built because we knew that we could provide solutions to people. Mike was the guy, I was the guy at that time. Now the team has grown massively out of Brainstorm. I myself had like have become a solid consultant now. He himself has become a solid consultant now. We applied both um principles we learned at Brainstorm into our personal brands, two solid brands. And so even how I market my music is different, how I market Oasis is different. That is because I've learned a lot from that. Um, through that, we've been able to groom another generation of content creators. Like it, it's been, it's been crazy, and we have a community of African entrepreneurs called Inner Circle. Wow. We have about fifty members across the wow. world who are part of that. So it's been, it's been a journey, and we are glad that we just started. I like that. We just started. I mean, if they, we just started, no <laughs> card. These guys are doing phenomenal. I mean, when you check their pay, and for me, in I, I wasn't really a design guy. I was just singing and, you know, that's how we met um, some of the events and all of that. Then COVID hits. I mean, social media is buzzing. And I see that you guys, that's something, Brainstorm Africa. And every day you, you guys put up content. So I'll go and like the content and they'll put some codes. Be, wow, I'll say some, you know. And I was just changing my man, mindset on branding, on marketing, on how you should sell. And I followed over the years. And I can boldly tell you, if you go to my screenshots now, I still have a lot of brainstorm oh, screen because okay. some of the things, especially now that I, I want to do more than I can I can do and I've been doing, I have to go back and relearn and all of the times, all the, the things we've learned with you is, is still golden and thank you for that. Thank you for that. How have you guys managed to grow it into a big brand now? So it's, it's easy to grow when you know you're not there yet. 
Yeah. It's very easy to grow when you know you're not there yet. You, no matter how hard you try, you still see that the ceiling is very far from you. Mm. That's one thing that's helped us a lot because every day, every week, we wake up in, in our mentality. There's something today, as we're about to record this podcast, I got a long message from Mike. There's another thing he wants us to try, something new. Wow. Tell you, let's refine this. Let's, even our emails, tell you, let's change how we want to send the emails. I'm like, okay. It means that every day there's something to do. Yeah. So the moment you start feeling like you've peaked, mm. you failed. Wow. Don't, don't feel that way. Like, every day, let's try and do, we just started. That's how I want to feel like, because there are certain kind of clients that we want to land that we haven't landed yet. So we saw that as we can. For example, there are certain clients that we owe apologies till date just because we missed something or we didn't do something right. So we overcome those things, you can't say that you're good. There are certain jobs that you could have done well and you didn't do well. So what's the point? Like, are you there? I know there. So always know that you're growing. Always know that there's room for growth. Always know that there's more you can do. You did bump. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what it is for Brainstorm Africa. We just feel like the ceiling is high and we feel like there's more we can do and there's more we should do. Why, why did you decide to, hey, I can't do nine to five? Because I know, I think you did your service with stomach or yeah, decide that I, I don't want to do this. I want to do this full time. Why? What was the decision? So Stambik, Stambik Bank, shout out to my family at Stambik. Stambik Bank gave me a lot of corporate and, um, uh, experience. Mm -hmm. I did all my internships at Stambik. Okay. With um, Stambik Investment Management Services. That was all my internships with them. They are family now. And my 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 full-time service, I did it with Stambik Bank, mm -hmm. International Private Bank. Yeah. And I did some work for the marketing team. Okay. Too. Um, I don't say, I don't, I didn't, I didn't decide that I wanted to stop corporates mm -hmm. and I didn't decide at all. I just didn't get the chance to keep working with them. Wow. And that's the truth. Some people would be kept after service. Some people won't be kept after service. For somebody who is now starting national service and watching this episode, um, work, just work while you can. If you're kept fine, if you're not fine. But after service, I wasn't seeing any signs that I'll be retained. And Mike already had taken, he did his national service with Brainstorm. So he took a chance on the brand a long time ago. And I realized that both of us can't do that at the same time. So the aim was to enter the corporate space, learn a lot, try and build some links and see that maybe it can help us. And after I was in retained, I'm like, there's already a baby sitting there. I might as well contribute my quota. So I told Mike about it and he's like, Charlie, let's cook. Then it's been, it's been, it's been smooth in the sense that I wake up in the morning and I know that, okay, if I don't work, I won't. So I know what I have to do now. Has it been the best? No. I don't like it. Um, working for yourself in Accra is one of the worst things you can decide to do as a young person. Yeah. If you are old to a point, yeah, fine. You don't have anything to lose. But young boy, you won't do your own thing. Where the money they come from? I mean, you go to a point where selling... Um, social media packages for people. Nobody wants this because ah, social media, I can do it on my own. But we're like, ah, so the wisdom, the knowledge we have, what should we use it for? So that has been one, one tough struggle, but it's fulfilling. It's fulfilling. This conversation has been fulfilling because definitely you know that in a world of about 4 billion people, there's one person who goes like, oh, I love your social media accounts and I love what you're doing. So it motivates you. So it wasn't, my hand was forced to be very honest and I don't regret it one bit. I don't think I can do corporates. I don't think I can do corporate anymore. I can't call for odds though. So bring your jobs back. I like it. The guy is a marketer. He's selling everywhere, Charlie. He, he, has, he has to sell. That's a good one. I like, I like the bit on the, the fact that, hey, we all get tough times and we hit walls and yeah. it doesn't mean we should, you know, beat ourselves up and, yeah. you know, that's a good one. Now you have a social media account and you are loud about it. You, you, you post often than, you know, how do you deal with hate comments and unpleasant feedback? I mean, I have a motto that I created my account and it's my password. So, you know, be your email where I take create them. So, first off, I tweet what I want to do and I post what I want to post. But I understand that as a Christian, my life is not my own. So, I need to be very sensitive about what I put out. And in doing that, it's helped me a lot. So, I would, I would, I would, I, I season and censor what I post, but you still find my personality from what I do, mainly because I'm not about to give you two faces you meet me in Tala. Like, charlie this guy then you give your social media then i'm loud no no link me this be the guy this be me so that that was my basis for being as active as i am on social media but on hate comments and hate speech um banter so for example i've had a a, a serious period where there were points where everything i said something christian or something was being 
um, trolled by someone and I always have a meme on standby or I always have a funny video on standby. Then I realized that people were getting frustrated because this guy is punching holes. I remember I had a back and forth with an atheist on social media. And I won't lie, I love the guy's re responses because he was very quick to insult. So the more you insult, the more my meme makes sense. Because you bring up no, like you diss me, you know, they need to like, get some Lil win video or some Jacko video. Like it made me happy. And I'm a social media manager myself too. So I'm looking for quick clicks for my brands or something. So ignoring is the A option. Don't ever bypass it because the Bible says that somebody who chooses not to speak is seen as wise. But we are also an advocate for mental health. We speak a lot about men, Charlie, mm. especially in our generation where it's like, you, you, we, men are painted to be tough. You know, you are one of the people that I've seen you do a lot of videos on, hey, it's okay if you're depressed. It's okay if, where is that coming from, you know? Men in general, or mental health in general is a topic that isn't spoken about enough in church. Mental health, sex, marriage, love. We only talk about some of these things when it's vows day. But how are we expecting young men and young women to to um, to procreate well? Um, there's a lot of adultery in the church. There's a lot of fornication in the church. There's a lot of um, bad things in the church, mainly because a lot of people haven't been exposed to certain pieces of information. And we are learning through school, learning through social media, learning through our friends who also learn through social media. For example, imagine being um, exposed to something like pornography by a porn addict. He has already rationalized why he's watching porn, so he's telling you about it as his source of escape. So you might pick it up as yours too. Then the cycle keeps going and it becomes a pattern. So what the church is massively failing on that, on that side. We are not doing well with coaching people on relationships. How do you expect people to just wake up and be in a relationship and they should come for marriage counseling? No. Coach people on how to even spot the right person. Coach people on how to even speak to these people. How to even relate to them. Like, definitely, you people have been in relationships for a long time. So, let me know how best I can, re like, relate to a woman and, and do it in the way that pleases the Lord. Same with mental health. You've been given your mind for a reason. It wouldn't be classified as health if it wasn't important. But the church has found a way of exercising that from everything we talk about. How is depression demonic? How is this demonic? How is that demonic? We've, we've, we've had these conversations for a long time, but nobody is, is, is dying down and dialing down to the fact that, okay, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. This is the community you need to have. This is how you need to approach it. And we need to let people understand that your mental capacity needs to be taken care of. Being vulnerable is key to certain things. And, and even... even <laughs> It's funny how we don't talk much about it, but even God wants to know what's going on in your mind. Like, talk to me. I think that's also another avenue for prayer because the more you pray, the more you talk about certain things you go through that you can't even tell the average person. And if our Heavenly Father is always ready to be there to listen to you, how much more, like, putting systems in place to make sure that my brother right next to me should be able to approach me and talk to me about what's happening? Because I won't have the answer, but I can intercede with you. So mental health is key for every guy watching this, for every lady watching this, for every Christian watching this, for every Muslim, whoever is watching this episode, mental health is key. Please, we need you. So please take care of your mental health. Don't neglect your hobbies at all and make good friends, solid friends who can feed into the total well-being of your mind. Because if your mind is compromised, there's nothing you can do. Actually, you know, in a generation where social media, you know, is a big one. And I, I asked that, in fact, when I saw you do the series on From Times, I was very excited because I myself struggled with depression in 2021. Mm -hmm. I'm, so I'm sure you remember me, I used to be loud. Oh, yeah. You know, but funny enough, I'm not as loud as I used to be. Of course, we're growing, but I think my personality has had to change over time. 2021 fell into some very dark depression. Mm -hmm. I mean, went off social media for a long time, wasn't taking my bath or brushing. I was literally living with my pastor. Mm -hmm. and. It was a very dark phase for me. And I mean, took the help of everybody, my brother, my sister, my pastor, teen Salah, to get me back, you know, to be. And even a year after that, I couldn't post my picture. And it would take a big deal. Like I used to think, you know, oh, I used to feel suicidal at a point in time and all of that. And so to see you, I mean, not by God's grace, I'm doing well by God's grace. And of course I take time off social media from time to time just to be fine and all of that. And to see you, talk about it and more like a, from a brother to another brother i thought it was very good thank you bro i mean it's the least it's the least we can do and thanks for being vulnerable 
about it. Hopefully, I pray that God gives you enough strength to talk more about that phase of your life. I'm learning straight that there are certain situations we go through that we'll never recover from. Not because that, not, not, not recover in that sense, but we'll never forget. Not because God, God is not a God that can, can't wipe our memory. But he wants us to constantly remember the days of old. Not to live in them, but remember them because somebody is coming your way who is going to bring you that same situation that you have to help them solve. You would have failed if somebody came to you with an issue on depression and you can't advise them. Like, you were going downhill. God brought you out of it. What is the conclusion? What can somebody learn from that? How can you pick them up? I don't hide it anymore. I went through a lot, a, a sincere battle with pornography and masturbation during a certain period of my life. And the moment it snapped off me, I realized that people kept coming to me with that problem. How do I do it? How do I do it? I don't have the solution, but I do have the person who has the solution. The best thing I can do is listen to you, be there for you, be there with you, and find some resources. So it's actually helped me research more into what addictions are about, how we get addicted, the fact that our minds don't even get stayed on certain things and we let it like consume us. Another thing is trauma response. Like Charlie, the trauma is great to the point where now your only response is to be addicted to something or to get attached to something. So don't let your trauma define you, but let your trauma also save somebody close to you. That's how I feel. So yeah, so Charlie, God bless you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've, so, the last thing, then we switch to more lighter questions is that, why do you take a sabbatical? Why do you archive your post and disappear? Yeah, Charlie, that's a deep one, but life is life thing and life is running. I don't just go on a break because I want to sleep. I'm working. I've been in the studio for the past couple of weeks. We have some recordings coming up. I'm revamping my podcast with Mike again. Um, we are really branching out the media side of Oasis and starting the creative agency from there. Um, we've been working well on a break. So is it ever truly a break? But social media gets toxic. So for everybody, you need to fast off social media. You need to fast off social media. You need to go off social media for a while, block out the noise. So everybody listening to this, if I am the one telling you to take a break, you know it's deep. Makes so much sense because this guy literally is online every time. So as part of my recovery phase after the depression was to take time off social media because sometimes you see a lot and all of that and it's like your life is crumbling. And so it's been good. This year I'm going to take it and it's good to see that you are, you are doing it. All right, Charlie, let's do some lighter note questions. Then we wrap up. A book that changed your mind. Um, a book that changed my mind, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah, solid book. Biggest leadership pet peeve. I mean, you are in a place of leadership. Yes. Or it could be music pet peeve or creative pet peeve, you know. First one, that's the leadership one. And um, when the people you are leading or the people around you don't have a sense of ownership, it annoys me a lot because me, my style of leadership, I'm very much involved. So I'll do everything I can because I feel like I own part of it. So if you're coming on board, own part of it. Creative pet peeve, people not copying enough. Like. There's nothing new under the sun. Ask plenty of questions, but back your questions with research. Then music pet peeve. People who try to box gospel music into a like one genre, but there are subgenres under gospel. It annoys me every time when something like um, VGMA or something groups gospel music into one. Last new thing you tried? Huh? Driving with a faulty engine. <laughs> I'm laughing because if I were going to reschedule the podcast because his car had issues. But Charlie, I made him know, Charlie, the way we suffered to yeah. get TV free, you know. And so Charlie, forgive us. If you couldn't sing, couldn't do any of the creative things you do, couldn't dance, what would you do? I'll cook. You cook? Yeah. Really? Well, you like cooking? Ah, uh, I cook. I have a food blog and everything. Wow, never I would cook. have thought about that. But my dad's theory when we were growing up is if you depend on a modern day woman to eat, you will kill yourself, kill the family, and ask questions later. I, I didn't understand it then, but he explained, my mom back then used to work like a very intense 9 to 5. And he goes like, do you expect your mother to leave work and come home and come and cook for you to eat? When she's tired more than you, you might as well go and remove something from the fridge and warm it. And that made sense. Fufu over banku. Charlie, we're questioning this guy, they asked me. Watch yourself over banku. Why are you putting that? But, fufu there, oh, mother. Leadership insecurity you face today. Oh, failure. Um, when you are leading, you have an objective, you have a goal. There's something you have to do. Then one day you wake up and you haven't done it. It's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. Why did you decide to come amidst all the stress and everything? Oh, ah, good question. So he shared a story. I'll go back to my first ministration out, like as an anaerobic freelancer, as an artist, was that I testified. Shout to Derek Jacobs. Back then at that administration, he was the MC, very eloquent, fluent, ran the room, worked the room. 
And it was a group of IS kids. So they, they were very reserved in their own way, but he managed to get everybody out of their shell. And I, I thought he went to one of their schools, like Christian High or something. And he, what, where schools have you go? Yeah, you know, Christian, you know, so I loved the way he worked the room and everything. But unfortunately for me, it seemed like as the program was going on, they kept forgetting that I was there. And I wouldn't forget that day forever. And people just kept passing by me. People like the ashes made me go and sit at the back. Like, and I don't blame them. They didn't know. And I was excited because at least it keeps me behind. But that day, he didn't even know who I was. And when they mentioned my name to him, he was pissed because the program was about to end. Charlie, this guy say, no, hey, like, yo, we are giving you 15. Make sure that your 15 minutes is your 15 minutes because I'll come for my mic and I'll end the program. And I was like, who is this guy? Like, who is this guy that's on my case? Man, this guy dragged me out. Like, hey, Jesus. So I went upstage, did my things. But the reason why I am here today is because of something he told me after that administration I'll never forget. And he goes like, I didn't know you were this good. No one thing he said, I didn't know. And it takes a lot of big mind energy to admit that you were wrong about someone. So I'm, I'm glad you did that. And I did learn a lot from you that day because to work a room of people that you are not too familiar with, that's a great thing. And since then, he always thinks differently. This guy, Melchizedek, I realized that after a while, Teens Aloud has been very popular along a certain space of time. But these guys wanted to take social media different and they were designing differently. And they kept asking questions. He, Melchizedek, both of them came asking questions. So I'm here mainly because you are different and I love what you do. I just have a big fight with him. He's doing too much talk and less action, guys. I don't, this podcast, I, if you guys are seeing it, clap for him. There's so much that he has to do that he hasn't done. There's so much he's supposed to do that he hasn't done. I don't know what he's waiting for. I don't know what he's sitting for. I don't know his failure he's scared of. I don't know, no, 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 no. But people, please comment on that and tell him that he doesn't have time. So he should look sharp. I rest my case. You know, it's always a blessing when you know that some people, you don't even deserve this person, this love, and you come all the way, even with the car issues and everything, still decide to shoot for us, to, to give us your knowledge and your wisdom. I don't take it for granted. To probably hear it that way. I mean, I'm a small boy. Yeah. I have a question for you, though. What are your expectations for this podcast? What made you start it, and where do you see it going? I started it because I think your parting comment are very true that I just know that I could do a lot, you know, and God has equipped me for that. Why am I not doing a lot after that? Especially, I think the phase also, when the phase happened, it slowed me and all of that. And so I started it because more to check my consistency of, hey, this time around, you started it, other people, it's not more about you. I mean, I could just say, okay, I want to post my picture, it's me. But this time around, it moves beyond me. Somebody on the other side of the screen is being blessed. So it gets me not to be selfish. So that's why it now is it's transcending beyond me that, hey, and other people are involved. And the pressure of, not, not the pressure, but the whole fact that I never know whose mindset is being changed by listening to Thousand today or listening to Nana Gospel that we had early on, you know. So the fact that it could bless somebody is just getting me to do more. And my expectation for it is to basically move people from talking to doing that hey we've all been talking i said i wanted to be an astronaut we've been talking so to move if, if it's able to move people from talking and doing i mean i never know who's gonna be blessed who's gonna bless i love that charlie you're on your way please let me use this opportunity to tell everybody watching this to keep supporting this guy everybody like some of these things is not for everybody but when somebody decides to go out of their way to do something please let's try our best to support we find ourselves comparing ourselves to other nationalities a lot. Just because a certain group of people are more, and I know you are talking about Nigerians, I am talking about Nigerians. They are very supportive and, and not, we have a lot to learn from that system, guys. Let's support good content, let's support each other, and let's push each other as high as we can. That said, thank you to everybody who's supported my journey. I, I mean, from the people who think it's a one-hit wonder, to the people who think there's more coming their way, to the people who feel like Nanael can be bigger than he is right now. I'm grateful to everybody who supported the journey. I'm, 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 I'm really grateful and my prayer is, as it says on the shirt, Fuego, that the fire of the Lord will continually burn in you and that you will do so much more than you can even imagine. So, and please don't forget God loves you, yeah? Nana, the name of the podcast is what? Talk no the cook rice. Talk no the cook rice. Guys, thank you so much. I mean, it's a wonderful time with Nana. Yeah, we see him anyway. Say thank you to him. He's done a lot for us and we're grateful. We pray that you are blessed by this episode. I mean, we are saying we pray because Charlie, I'm not, I'm not an atheist. I'm a Christian guy, right? so I will push God everywhere. Charlie, guys, thank you. We out. Right. Anna.
solid episode, bro. Talk, 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 talk,